Hi everybody, I'm Cadenza, and this is Pandora's Box. Uh, this is a puzzle game that was developed and published by Microsoft Game Studios and released in 1999 for Windows 95 computers. Uh, this game is notable for being designed by Alexei Pajitnov, and if that name sounds at all familiar to you, that's because he's the guy that made Tetris. He's actually made a fair few other games besides Tetris, not that I've played most of them. You should uh, look up a list sometime, there's some weird stuff in there. Mm, excuse me. But uh, anyway, this is one of my favorite puzzle games. I, uh, I like this game a whole lot, and I'm excited to show it off to you all today. Um, I actually don't play puzzle games very often. I tend to get impatient with them, which is weird, personally speaking, because I'm generally pretty patient with video games in general, but I don't know. I like this game. I, uh, I think it's pretty unique. I can't really think of any other games uh, that are like it. Not that I've played a whole lot of puzzle games to be able to compare. Like, if... Anybody's released anything that's even remotely like this game, please feel free to tell me. I would love to check it out. But um I have a fairly extensive history with this game. Like I used to I used to watch my dad play it on his office computer when I was a kid. And uh I played it back then too, some, but I never did get very far. I think my dad finished it. I'm pretty sure he did. But um I've gone back to this game several times over the years. And I've even finished it once or twice myself now, as an adult. And uh, I'll be doing that again. Let's uh, let's go ahead and input my name here. Pay no attention to these. They were this was uh, part of a test playthrough I did a few months ago. I'll probably get into that as we go on. But uh, let's go ahead and get started. The gods gave Pandora many gifts: beauty, cleverness, curiosity. But their most dangerous gift was a beautiful puzzle box. When opened, it would release the spirits of chaos and mischief into the world, which is exactly what they wanted. And so it was that seven tricksters escaped and scattered to the ends of the earth. Hiding pieces of the box and scrambling everything they touched. Follow the tricksters around the world, find the missing pieces, and return them to Pandora's box. Your first mission is to capture Maui, the trickster hero of Hawaii. This is the story of how Maui played a trick and pulled the Hawaiian islands from the sea. Maui was a skilled shape changer, but when he was a boy, his four older brothers left him behind every time they went fishing. You're always playing tricks and you never catch any fish, they told him. One day, however, Maui had a plan. All right, let's find us some box pieces. Uh, I'm gonna go ahead and close this world map tutorial here. The interface is pretty self-explanatory, I think. You can pause it if you really wanna read it. But uh, this game is divided into levels, one for each of the seven trickster gods featured in the game. And once you go, once you complete one, you can't go back and do it again. So the game is pretty linear in that fashion, but we will at least have the option to choose between more cities as the game goes on. But uh, for now, let's go to New York. Find a piece of Pandora's box behind one puzzle in each city. I believe this is randomly determined at the start of the game. Uh, as you play, you can earn bonuses. Use a hint to place a piece automatically in any feature puzzle. Hints are hidden behind random puzzles. Also, use free puzzle tokens to solve feature puzzles automatically. Very handy. Free puzzle tokens are hidden behind random puzzles. Also earn a free puzzle token for every 10 puzzles you solve. Uh, I will want to be stockpiling these as much as I can during the early game so that I can uh, use them as needed in the late game because some of the late game puzzles get extremely fiendish. Alright. There are 10 different types of puzzles in this game. We'll be introduced to them as the game goes on. I'll go ahead and take the tutorial. I'm sure the game will explain this better than I could. Click two pieces to make them trade places and sizes. And get a nifty little animation. Try to place the biggest pieces first. Click the buttons on the right to turn the grid or animation on and off. 
continue to compose the picture by trading pieces. Uh. Hello? Oh, god damn it, the game froze. Okay, we're back here. Uh, the game crashed. <laughs> so, uh, this game wasn't ever re released, uh, to my knowledge. So, I'm playing a perfectly legitimate disc copy, let's say. And it does work on at least Windows 10. That's what I'm, that's what my laptop is on right now. But it is prone to crashing occasionally. That's that's just something that I'm going to have to put up with, and I'll try and edit around it as much as possible. I do apologize in advance. Let's hope it doesn't crash this time. And I'll try not to go too fast. And hope th that works out. I think we're good. Okay! Perfect. Congratulations, now you know how this puzzle works. Click continue to try the real puzzle. I will. Alright, these early puzzles are going to be pretty simple. This has this thing has like literally less than 10 pieces. But uh, regardless, I will be providing timestamps for every puzzle in a given video uh, in the description, so you can use that to click through. Uh, I highly recommend doing that if if I get stuck on a puzzle for a long time, because I'm not always going to be able to keep up commentary. <laughs> so this is Rockefeller Plaza in St. Patrick's Cathedral, photographed by D. Falconer. Falconer? One of those. Isn't that nice? I don't remember if I've seen this particular cathedral, but I have been to New York once. Oh, you're running a little choppy. That animation is supposed to be smoother. Uh, normally it is, but I guess that might be a side effect of uh, the crash from earlier. Hopefully next recording session will be a little different. But anyway, let's, let's learn about rotoscopes. To move a piece that is next to the open space, click the piece. First click the piece on the left, the faces. Tip, it often helps to complete the outer ring first. You can move pieces between rings. Try clicking the small piece to the right of the open space. You can also move the center piece. Try clicking it now. Now complete the puzzle. I'm gonna be real with y'all. Uh, rotoscopes are my least favorite puzzle category in this game. I just... I have a really hard time getting in the right headspace for them, I guess? Like, this one's really easy, comparatively speaking, but that's not always going to be the case. New York City, photogra photographed by Jeremy Woodhouse. Isn't that a nice view? But yeah, I have uh, by far the hardest time with rotoscope puzzles. I just have a hard time wrapping my head around them as a concept, I guess. I don't know why. I'm just gonna go ahead and be paranoid about saving. Just in case. And here's the third type of puzzle. Overlap. Click the piece on the left and drag it to the correct place on the image. Some pieces contain part of the background. This is a hint to their location. Some pieces overlap part of the picture, hence the name. Some pieces need to be rotated. Right-click to rotate a piece. You can move pieces to other stacks on the left to organize them. Not that I need to for this. Continue to replace all the pieces to solve the puzzle. I like overlaps a lot. I find them very... very chill. It's, it's good to just... They're, they're a good way to just, like, vibe out for a while while you're playing this game, I guess. I know where this goes. Come on. There we go. But, uh, what was I saying earlier? Oh, yeah. I've, uh, I've been to New York once. I went in t back in 2017 when I was in college. 
our uh, our college wind band took a trip up there. We uh, we watched a symphony performance at the New York at the um what is it the Metropolitan? Yeah, that's the place. And we watched a Mozart opera there. That was pretty cool. Well, it was pretty cool for the experience of it, I guess, because no way am I ever going to be able to afford th doing that shit on a regular basis. <laughs> this is not cheap. I don't enjoy Mozart's music terribly much. <laughs> but, uh, again, cool experience, and I did a lot of other neat things there. The Statue of Liberty in New York City, photographed by Jan Artus Bertrand. I apologize for, uh, any incorrect incorrect that's not a word any incorrect name pronunciations i might do over the course of this let's play i'm probably going to get several names wrong but i will try my best uh get used to this uh pace while you can by the way i'm not going to be able to keep this up forever and probably not even for very long i um i did a test play of this game a few months ago i want to say i started it back in like april ish just so that I could re-familiarize myself with how the game works, you know. But, um, I went a little too hard on it. <laughs> and what I mean by that is, I started getting really bad hand cramps in my right hand, my mouse hand. Because I was like, I have a really bad habit of, like, pressing on, of, like, gripping things with my right hand too hard. Read into that how you will. And, uh, it got bad enough that I had to, like, go out and buy compression gloves for myself and start to wear them. And that was right around, and right around the time I had to do that was when I had to start helping my uh, my roommate get ready for his move, because he moved out recently. Uh, that happened back in July, as of the time of this recording. So on top of being super busy for that and having my my hand cramp problems, I wasn't able to actually start recording for this until relatively recently. But, uh, hopefully that's all good now. And I have learned a lesson to be kinder to myself and to my body. <laughs> I'm not getting any younger. Hopefully I can avoid, uh, future incidents. Future hand cramp incidents. Which is maybe a weird way of putting it. But, uh, anyway, this is Times Square as photographed by Lee Snyder. Pretty cool to see in person. Very big, very noisy. Ooh, I'll take that. Dun da da da. I'm gonna go ahead and save again. Why not be a little paranoid? All right, another focus point. But, uh, while I was in New York, we, uh, some friends and I went to go see a musical. It was, um, I forget the full title, but it's like, it's called, like, The Great Comet of 1812. It's based on a specific passage from War and Peace, I think. Uh, it was, it was fun. It was a good time. I don't remember most of what happened in it, but it was an enjoyable spectacle. <laughs> uh, a cool thing to have done at least once, I guess. I don't really feel the need to uh, to do it again, but I don't regret going. Certainly, I uh, I had you know when I was younger, I, I I had I had thoughts like you know what it would be cool if I wrote a musical one day, and I don't know maybe it still would be cool, but like that is a gigantic undertaking and an expensive undertaking, and Lord knows I'm not rich. Not to mention that even if you have the funds and people take you seriously enough to want to put it on, they take, like, sometimes years to get off the ground. And am I doing this puzzle correctly? I'm not sure that I am, but I'm going to keep going anyway. So, I'm not sure. I'm not quite sure it will be worth all that effort, but I don't know. Maybe. Let me turn off the animation real quick so I can move these around faster. I never turned off the animations of the grid or anything when I was younger, but I found myself doing it quite often. Uh, 
in my test playthrough. What am I missing here? This this piece, but where does this go? Hmm. Ah, there we go. Solomon R. Guggenheim Museum, as photographed by Lee Snyder. I did not go to that museum, but I did go to the Metropolitan Museum of Art on the last day we were there. That was pretty awesome. Took a whole ton of pictures of... Oh, actually, I don't want to do this one. I'll go do this one first. You'll see why later. Uh, took a whole lot of pictures of various cool pieces of art, a lot of which probably shouldn't be in New York and should instead be in their country of origin, but what do I know? I'm just a bird on the internet. Anyway, let's see here. Again, don't get used to the, the pace I'm solving these puzzles at. It is not going to last. Feel free to use the timestamps in the description to skip around to other parts of the video if you want. I feel like this is probably going to be a uh, put it on in the background series for a lot of people, and that's fine. I don't mind being entertaining background noise. That's uh, that's part of what you sign up for when you get into this hobby. I love how big these pieces are. Some of the later, some of the later puzzles, the pieces are so small. Anyway, this is downtown New York City at dusk, as photographed by Gary Brash. We're more than halfway through solving New York. Uh, I think I misspoke earlier. I said the... The, um... Oh my god, words. I said that the puzzle that contains the piece of the box you're looking for is randomly determined at the start of the game. I don't think that's the case. I'm pretty sure I know exactly what puzzle it is, but the the tokens, those are randomly distributed. I know that for a fact. Anyway, another focus point puzzle. There are a lot of focus point puzzles. I think maybe focus point and overlap are among the most uh, numerous types of puzzle in this game. The, uh, the different categories are not evenly distributed, which is it's just unfortunate to me personally, who likes things to be nice and neat, but it's fine. I think I'm almost done with this already, actually. Yep, there we go. <laughs> just some skyscrapers, as photographed by Kit Kittle. But yeah, I have no doubt that later episodes are going to be long. Uh, this one's probably the toughest one here. Which isn't saying much now, since we're still at the very beginning of the game, but... Later puzzles are gonna get fiendish. Uh, well, I'm going through trying to solve this puzzle. I do like I do like the music of this game a lot. It's um the soundtrack was done by Nathan Grigg, which is not a name I'm terribly familiar with outside of the context of this specific game, but apparently he works at uh, Monolith now. I did some quick googling before this video uh, just to try and remember who did the music and apparently he did the music or at least some of it for uh, Middle Earth Shadow of War that um <laughs> that Lord of the Rings flavored Assassin's Creed looking game. I never played that. It seems seemed neat, but also seemed like I don't know. I don't know. I'm going to I'm going to stop this line of thought before I I I start dissing a game I literally haven't played before. But uh I like the music in this game a lot. It has it has a unique character. But I will say that it also is maybe guilty of doing a little bit of, uh... How do I want to phrase this? It kind of flattens the uh, musical culture of some of the places that we're going to be visiting. And what I mean by that is... I'm not... And take this with a grain of salt. I'm, uh, I'm not an expert on music by any means. I am a musician, but that doesn't give me, like, any degree of, like, 
real authority when I'm talking about this stuff. I'm just the bird with the microphone. But, um... I don't know. The, uh, the music for... For North American cities, what you're hearing right now, I think it's I think it's pretty good. That's it's uh it's very multifaceted. There's a lot going on here, and it all blends together pretty well. But some of the music for the other countries we'll be visiting sounds sounds a little bit more one note, and uh, we'll we'll get into that maybe a little bit more as we go on. But I do think generally speaking, uh, the music is pretty good. U.S. currency by somebody, uh. -huh. I do appreciate that this game does credit who made what image uh, when it can, but there are a lot of unknowns. Oh boy, another rotoscope. Okay. Uh, let's see. I don't know if he did the sound design, but um, shout out to the sound design of this game. It's really good. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know how to explain it. I'm not... This is not my, uh... Not my field. But... Just listen to it. It's really pleasing. It sounds real nice. I'm noticing that the rotoscope animation is running a little... sluggishly. I feel like I might have to start this one over. Let me go ahead and do that. It might, but uh, the choppiness of this this animation might be a side effect of the game having crashed earlier. Hopefully it'll run better in future recording sessions. I guess I'll just have to wait and find out. Alright, let me... what am I doing here? What am I doing? I'm trying to switch these two around. That wasn't the right call, I don't think. Uh, you see what I mean? I have such a hard time with these specifically. Like, this is not supposed to be a hard puzzle. I should have already solved it by now. And yet, here I am, having not solved it by now. There we go. That's how you do it. Uh, the general rule of trying to complete the outside layer first is very helpful, genuinely. General Sherman at Grand Army Plaza, as photographed by uh, Pharrell Grayen, I think is how you pronounce that. I hope so. No telling who built those statues, but that's who took a picture of them, I guess. Ooh, a hint token. Once again at 4 FPS. I'll go ahead and save that, sure. Alright, one last puzzle. I think that, yeah, I think that needs to stay where it is. I was trying to turn the animation on. That's not right. Hmm. Hmm. I used to be able to solve this puzzle in, like, less than 30 seconds. <laughs> but that is beyond me, clearly. That's- that looks correct. That is also definitely correct. Which means that needs to go- yeah, there we go. Yeah! Let's see. Put that there. Put this there, yeah. Yeah, we're doing it. We're doing it. We're making it happen. Put that there. There we go. That's how you do it. The Great East River Suspension Bridge by Courier and Ives. Probably not Charles Ives, but that's the only Ives I'm familiar with. Anyway. Again, this animation should be smoother. Hopefully it'll work out next time. <laughs> Maui became a seagull and flew after his brother's boat. 
When his brothers saw the seagull, they rolled toward it. Soon one brother felt a tug on his line and pulled in a big fish. The seagull swooped down and ate the fish, then changed back into Maui. I found a fish for you, he said. And then you ate it, said one brother. We're never taking you fishing again. Find the peace with the seagull. Oh, Maui, you rascal. Alright, let's head off to Cairo.